what I'd like to talk about today a little bit is the concept of auditory deprivation. Um, what we tend to do in audiology is when people have lost their sense of hearing, we tend to say, go away. Uh, it's going to get better spontaneously. And we're starting to realize that this is simply not true. Um, one of the things that also complicates this is the lack of process consistency in the field. And it's a really good point to make, in fact, to talk about the Pecha Kucha, right? Why would you do a Pecha Kucha? Well, it's a pretty easy answer because you want a consistent process. Uh, I see that as a meta-reflection on the field at large, where we really suggest that decline in speech cognition uh, is really a factor in wider cognitive decline. Traditionally, what we'll do is go through a long process. We, we take the case history, we measure pure tone audiometry, and if we're lucky, uh, people might say, well, I recognize those sounds because they're from the, the someone swearing on the television or getting out of my automobile or something like that. Um, but what we realize is that this process is inconsistent. So what can we do about this? What can even be done? What we want to do is, is avoid this long and involved road that people might choose to say, we don't want to engage with this. We think that it, it's inaccessible. It, it's something that we, we can't understand, how we are not getting benefit. We have all the gain in the world we need. Our real ear measures are great, but we still don't find the benefit. What can we do about that? Uh, and we realize as we look through this, there is a lack of process consistency in the field. Um, the idea being, more people choose to live in hell with hearing loss uh, than to choose the heaven uh, of finding a solution, a real solution. And a lot of what we've talked about in this conference uh, is really optimistic. It makes me really optimistic about the field, but this results in low penetration in some markets that we see today, uh, especially the U.S. Uh, but we're doing better. So what did we want to do about this? We wanted to take a deep dive, very deep, and we wanted to see uh, what were the undergirding factors for all of this? What can we do? And we, we arrive at uh, a similar conclusion to, to the former speaker here, where it's in the brain. We really think that. And that when we're using like the now NL2 and such, uh, it relates to factors that are in the brain. And so what we realized there is that doing prescriptive fitting rationales isn't the answer. It's really patient-involved, active training, goal-directed focus. And that's a really important detail. And I would say more generally in healthcare, not just in audiology, but most especially in audiology. Uh, and so we, we really believe that uh, patient-involved active training is important. Um, so the promise of the technology is what gets us there, but it doesn't do everything for it. Uh, it's really a tool in the box for all of us. And what we see here is that when we provide the tools, we can achieve higher levels of efficiency, quality, consistency, access and independence for people. And that's a really important detail for those that live every day with hearing impairment. The way we go about this is by alternating excitation with relaxation in such a way we're doing active training and that they're able to access cues they may not other, otherwise realize or may not have a goal direct uh, to get to. They may not understand how to do it. Uh, if you're really interested in this, please come to the, uh, the workshop tomorrow. I'd love to tell you about it. Um, but what we're really talking about here more specifically and more, more abstractly in this talk is rehabilitating the auditory pathways. What can we do with involving central hearing processing? Not just the peripheral structures of hearing that we tend to focus on today, but in the future, in what ways can we access these auditory pathways? It's not if, right? We're hearing this from the other talks. It's not if, it's how. How do we do it? Um, and so the, the brain, it turns out, is quite a wonderful thing. Uh, you know, we have this uh, neuroplasticity. You know, it's not injection molded, of course, but it's plastic in its, in its entirety, meaning that it responds to changes. So this auditory deprivation means if you lack this input, uh, you're gonna have a trouble going back to, to understanding those neural representations before you had hearing loss. Gain is not the only way to get there. And so what we really wanna do with the process consistency is improve the quality of the fittings. Oftentimes today, you give people uh, 100 people, audiologists, one audiogram, you'll get 100, maybe 120 different results, uh, even though you've done your REMS and your everything. So quality is a really important message, and it's going to be extremely important to drive consistency in this entire process. So that's really the message I want to leave you guys today as far as the future of this field, is it's going to relate heavily on process consistency, not variability. We really want to reduce the variability that we see in our fittings today. Um, there are certain vehicles that we can use to get there, of course, 
Uh, but it, it, we will go into more detail in those in the workshop. Uh, and so it's worth reinforcing, of course, consistency. We really want to get there. Um, and so the idea being we can continually auto-adjust things with the wireless or with the telehealth or with the other things that we're doing, but it must be a process. And so not only must it be a process, but it also must be consistent, even though we know that there's variability among those with hearing loss. So we have this slide once again, you see, because it's so important. That's why I want to reinforce it. Um, and so that's where brain training is it's the key, is, is we really understand that that's the lowest underlying system that we're dealing with here. And so what we're talking about really isn't selling a device. We're not selling a product on a peg. We're selling a process. And to do so, we must be consistent. This was going to help if we can get there in the future to help us get faster access, faster rehabilitation, and always doing things a little bit more efficiently. But remember, it's never about speed, even though the slide says so. It's about accuracy. Speed will come when we have a consistent process that's accessible and repeatable among people. Affordability. It's very important for people as part of access in many ways to have solutions that they can use that are not only accessible but also affordable for them. Things that uh, could encompass you know, remote microphones, for example, or wireless programming of their instruments. A lot of times, many of these people don't even have smartphones. Um, but it's changing, and we hope to capitalize on those technologies in order to get us to a point where we're removing the inaccessibility and just leaving people with accessibility. That's one of the really important details to doing the brain training uh, in the ways that we talk about in the workshops. But compared to the traditional resource demand approach, we have all this calibrated equipment and all of these things that we deal with, and in many ways that can make things inaccessible. So if we are successful in doing this and implementing it, we will achieve great outcomes with people. And we hope that this represents the first step to the future that starts today. Thank you.